Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and dear friends, and welcome again to EU Business Talks. I was kind of missing our ordinary music this time. I hope you have heard it, but I didn't. So this is why the vibe is not uh, as a normal one. Ah, we will do something about it next time. Anyway, most welcome. And uh, my pleasure today is uh, to welcome our guest of honor today, Mr. Lars Linsko, CEO, owner of Linsko Communication. Dear Lars, good day to you and most welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, Lars, how are you doing? Are you talking with us from your home city? No, I'm uh, staying at a client right now because we had a, a webinar on uh, internet trade uh, with the Danish Chamber of Commerce. Um, because, uh, of course, every, the world is going online after uh, Corona. So uh, our clients and their clients and customers would like to, uh, to get an update on, uh, on how Danish internet trade is, uh, is going along with the, with the global uh, uh, community that we are living in. Okay. So I just stepped out of one studio and, and into another one. So I'm not home right now. I'm at a, a meeting, a good meeting room here with one of my good clients. Okay, so as long as the topic, the previous topic is still hot, what's yeah. the outcome of, of your previous hour? Uh, well, it's, uh, of course, it's uh, whether you're trading with uh, clothes or furniture or cars or uh, daily goods, uh, the world is changing both for, for supermarkets, for, for retailers, for wholesalers, and for producers of, uh, of goods. And uh, you need to, to go through your value chain um, in order to, to step up with, with the demands you have from, from the clients and the markets. Uh, so we were talking about uh, containers from the Far East and uh, production in Europe and, uh, and uh, I don't know whether there was any solutions, but anyway, we, we concluded that uh, change is uh, coming rapidly and we need to uh, stay on track in order to, uh, to maintain competition in the global market. I'm not an expert on this, Lars, but my humble opinion is that every circle uh, we are running faster and faster. What do you say on that? And where that's, does it end? That's true. Uh, we say that, that either you, you step on or, or you get off pissed uh, and, and, um, and you, you, you need to stay on track. Of course, there will be a lot of uh, changes in the way that we have our local grocery uh, shop or uh, the, the, the local shops, uh, because everybody is trading online, but everybody wants to reduce uh, the, the climate uh, footprint. Uh, how does that connect with the, that you have only one click away on your mouse from, um, from adding a, another container from, from the other side of the globe uh, coming to, to your doorstep? So, so we are in a, in a dilemma as, a, as mankind, I think. Big decisions. 24-7 optimization, I guess. Yeah, yes. this is the... Uh, well, Lars, uh, you are definitely not in your office, but you are in Denmark. So uh, may I ask you for the beginning, uh, economic-wise, how is Denmark doing these days, weeks, months? That depends on whether you uh, ask the uh, the social democratic government or the <laughs> liberal opposition. Uh, but uh, no matter how political uh, viewpoint you have, I think that the Danish economy is uh, going uh, quite well right now. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of optimism in uh, in as well the the different sectors, of course, travel industry and. Uh, and uh, some of the um, the tourism organizations and uh, cultural uh, view sites have been um, have been um, influenced by the by the corona virus and 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 the pandemic. Uh, but otherwise, uh, business is uh, flourishing and the economy is uh, quite good. Optimism is quite good in in the small uh, medium businesses, and uh, I don't think that any. Uh, any companies aren't short of everybody is short of people that's what i'm going to say uh we we need skilled people in construction we need them in in trade we need them in restaurants and cafes uh, we need them in my company uh, as a communication uh, uh, agency 
uh, we need uh, skilled people everywhere. Is it, uh, Lars, is it, uh, is my uh, information, I mean, I, I, I thought I was watching BBC or something the other day. Are you already uh, a mask-free society? You must be on top yeah. three, if not uh, the, 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 the top, uh, the first country in Europe, in European Union as such. Yeah, I think we uh, got rid of the masks a uh, month or two ago. Uh, I was in Norway uh, the other day in, 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 on a business trip and I needed to, to wear a mask in the airport and in the airplane. And uh, uh, I was in Paris uh, the week before that. We need to have masks uh, in, in the plane as well. And um, I, it was like uh, going three months back in Denmark. It was uh, it was very not not very pleasant. We are not uh, we're not pleasant with the masks. Well, I uh, I first of all I'm jealous on your country, and secondly <laughs> I hope you will continue this path forward, and uh, uh, you will stay a mask free society in the future as well, uh, dear friends. Uh, let me say that Lars is our, this is otherwise Lars, this is a business chat, you know, but mm -hmm. you are also a first active politician. Mm -hmm. So dear friends, my obvious first question to Lars is, are you a businessman in politics or you are a politician in the uh, business world? That's what my clients ask in one meeting and what my political colleagues ask in another meeting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I've I been should in... <laughs> be more innovative then. Sorry for that. <laughs> I've, I've, been, uh, I've been in politics all my life. I'm 58 years old and I've been in politics since I was 14. And um, I think it's a good thing that uh, business uh, people are in politics uh, because there's a lot of uh, mutual... Um, uh, benefits going on with, with you know, the, the, the public sector has its uh, upsides and good things and, and business-wise you have uh, some other uh, advantages and bringing them together is, is a kind of cross field that I like to work in uh, but it is difficult, it is a, a difficult um, uh, language to, to speak uh, when you are speaking politician uh, and that's why we also, in my own uh, agency, has a public affairs uh, section with eight skilled uh, senior uh, consultants uh, that has been in the public sector, has been in the parliament and can, can translate uh, political issues uh, to, uh, to, to businesses, because uh, a businessman going into the parliament is, going, is not always going good. And, and a, a politician coming out to, to, the, to the companies uh, is also good, but but there's a lot of uh, short of, of of knowledge of each other's conditions um, that is good with the dialogue. So I think it's it's nice uh, to be in that cross field. But but it's uh, sometimes you you're a little bit squeezed on your calendar. But I, anyway, c'est la vie, I would say. But I understood that this is a win-win formula for you and for for many others, and it's a good. Uh, the right way to do it actually because we are part of society we should bring our value added into society and so far democracy politics are the tools that we are using to do just that yeah. uh, i guess Lars, this this uh, chat is called eu business talks so i'm asking each and everyone from business sector are we as Europeans in the same boat? Where are we today as European Union and where we will be in the next five, 10 years or so? What's your opinion on that? Are you talking to the petitions or, or, to, or to me? Just you as Lars, regardless okay. of your CV. <laughs> um, well, I'm a firm believer in the European Union and the European community. I'm a firm believer in the single market I think uh, that uh, the European Union is a project of peace, uh, trade and prosperity. And uh, even though there are some, uh, of course there are some uh, things coming from the European uh, Commission or the, the parliament, which is crazy, which is always in politics, but it's not always uh, good things coming from uh, business as well. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's a, it's a democratic uh, parliament and, and uh, democratic um, organ that, that we have here. And uh, I think that uh, I, I was employed in the European parliament as a political assistant for 
um, for th 30 years ago, almost mm. seems like yesterday. But uh, but it was when the single market was was just starting up. And I talked to, to younger people today saying that in the Nordic countries, uh, we didn't have uh, fresh fruits and vegetables uh, at our supermarkets and groceries in the wintertime in Denmark. Uh, everybody was fighting each other uh, in, on the Balkan. Uh, we had wars uh, in Eastern, Eastern Europe, uh, or we have a cold war going on with with mm. uh, with our friends in, in, in Poland and, and East Germany and stuff like that. And we have brought peace and prosperity uh, to the European continent uh, by trading with trading with each other and by visiting each other and uh, having uh, vacations with each other and interrail for our young people. Uh, I, d I wouldn't uh, trade that for anything. And I'm very sad to hear all these national uh, politicians and votes saying that uh, we need to, like Brexit, uh, lies and uh, misinformation uh, in order to, to, uh, to be popular in your own country and then uh, just stepping on everybody else in, in the European uh, countries. Uh, I, I don't like that approach. I think that, that we need each other uh, to to in a global market to fight with uh, Asia, with the United States, and uh, with other uh, big um, populations, uh, South America, uh, Africa could, could be a, 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 a very large uh, competitor in the future with all the Chinese investments going on there. So I think that we need to stick together uh, in the European Union, uh, and I need we need to 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 do that much more. So when people in Denmark, of course, we are divided like the most of your countries probably are, is that we have to leave uh, Europe uh, at the European Union. I said we need to have more European Union. Uh, that's the only way that we can solve the climate crisis, the uh, the refugees and the uh, and the migration, uh, all those international big issues in a global. Uh, world, we need to have a strong European uh, Union. So I'm very happy that you have these uh, business talks and we can share information. We don't have to agree on everything, but but it, if it keeps up for us from, from going to war with each other and it keeps us to, to have better um, trading and prosperity and, and uh, better international solutions, I'm all for it. So I, uh, I can very much relate to what you are saying, Lars. So in, in short, I would say that you are saying, yes, we are on the same boat and we have to keep our idealism high and continue sailing in the same boat in the future as well. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. Dear friends, dear, dear Lars, uh, let me go further to the business side of our today's guests and reread the, the, the short chapter from the invite. As Lars is owner of Linzkov Communication, based in Roskilde, Greater Copenhagen offices with Odense and Aarhus. Linzko Communication is a full service communication agency providing a wide range of communication disciplines. The clients range widely from the local biogas facility plants to national companies to Nordic and international listed corporation. You are or your company is member of many organizations, agency networks. So my first question here, to, I'm, I'm afraid to say I'm not an insider on that, but what is it a wide range of communication disciplines Lars? as this seems like a core business of yours um, yeah. i don't know whether you have the same expressions in, in 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 your countries but in denmark we say if you always walk around with a hammer in your trousers every every problem looks like a nail <laughs> so, yeah, so no, if, if 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 you if you only have one uh, one communication discipline uh, on the shelf uh, or your exhibition window. If you go into a web shop, you'll have a good web page. If you go to a marketing agency, you'll have a nice brochure. If you go to a public relations agency, you'll have a, a press release. I would like to have a customer coming into my shop saying, uh, I need to communicate to my, uh, to my target groups. Which channel should I use? Which tool should I use? And then you enter the story. 
and then I enter the story. Yes, uh, I will. Uh, we have web designers, we have journalists, uh, show me specialists. Um, so we will design a communication package to the to the client uh, which they need, and not what we have on the shelves. And if, if they have a need for employer branding campaigns on videos, we will join with a, a video company, or we will have our own staff. So that's a, a matter of uh, putting the, the, the client into to focus instead of what we have on our shelves. Now, Lars, uh, uh, having said all that, is who, I mean, are you getting your clients from mouth to mouth commercials? Are they coming to you or you are searching them actively on the other side or it is the combination of both? We uh, never participate in any agency pitches. Uh, if we are invited uh, together with an agency or otherwise to our network, of course, we will make an offer and we will make a, a pitch on that. But going into to pitches, uh, we don't use that. We, we save a lot of time uh, by going mouth to mouth. All our clients are personal relations um, uh, through our customers and th or through uh, my personal network or some of the, the employees uh, who has uh, contacts uh, elsewhere. Okay. So we, we we don't we're a communication agency. We we don't we don't take our own medicine because we don't uh, make any commercials or ads or uh, films or anything. Um, we don't need to. That's that's very. We are very um, we, we are very spoiled in that way. It just works that way. It seems. Uh, it says here. Linsco is a member of the global convert agency network, which consists of more than 80 owners managed agencies in more than 50 countries. Lars, can you please elaborate on that? Yes, I started the agency 10 years ago. Uh, I had been uh, an executive assistant for, for C-level in, in many uh, companies and in the industry before that. Uh, and I was uh, buying my own communication services. So I thought that, well, I want to have my own agency and I want to be supplier of that, uh, the things that I have uh, bought for many years. And uh, a couple of years after uh, we started up, uh, we were, I think uh, we were one or two or three employees at the time. We had a, um, a reach out for an international agency network called Comport based in Barcelona. And they said to us, well, are you an, a media planning agency? Are you an advertising agency? Are you a communication agency? And, you know, I was just starting up. I didn't know what I was. I was just uh, making some communication to our clients. So uh, a firm uh, business plan we didn't have. But uh, the, the International Business Network uh, helped us sharpen our focus on our business model. What are we? And we... Uh, attended me and i have a, a ceo in in, uh, in daytime she's very uh, very good and very clever much more educated than i am within communication skills um and we entered this uh, international network and i've got a lot of international contacts uh, in uh, germany austria france uh, great britain uh, and they helped us see how uh, the the advertising and uh, pr and and um, communication market is in uh, different countries. And I have a lot of respect for, for the differences in the European Union as well, and also for foreign markets, because if I have a client who wants to, to make a, a campaign in, in uh, the Netherlands, I will call my, one of my colleagues instead of trying to be uh, clever on what's going on on, on, uh, on the Dutch market. Uh, I would call one of my, my associates down there uh, and um, and use their uh, national insights and uh, and their contacts and skills. So that has been a, a very very uh, fruitful. Again, international collaboration uh, is nice. That I, I I had a client who wanted to export some some items to the uh, to to Great Britain, and I called one of my colleagues in in Birmingham. Said, could you make a, a launch plan for this product uh, on the the UK market? And, and they did that. So, so it's, um, it's nice to have somebody to reach out to. Trust, huh? yeah. uh, it's the key word here. Yeah. Pleased to hear that. Dear friends, uh, uh, I'm already uh, uh, catching your questions, your thoughts with my right eye here in the chat box. 
before we go over uh, over there uh, Lars let me ask you one last question in this phase there are plenty of uh, businessmen business women here in the room who are somehow this way or that way eager to do something new uh, with your market with the Danish market uh, either it is export import or something else are you addressing this kind of inquiries yourself or or uh, you are out of this game so somebody wanting to find somebody to cooperate are you in between of such games yes of course i would uh, i would recommend people to go to to the chamber of uh, uh, commerce and industry like like yourself uh, from your country if if it's uh, slovenian uh, in fact, we have the Slovenian uh, consul uh, living in Roskilde, where, where I live. That's how we got connected in the first way with Mr. Philipson. Um, and, and we welcomed the Slovenian uh, ambassador a couple of years ago uh, when uh, there was a new uh, ambassador uh, assigning the post. Um, and there, uh, at, at that time, I got a lot of uh, new information on Slovenia that I didn't know uh, about the Slovenian products and uh, wine and everything that I was introduced to. Uh, again, uh, a very, very fine uh, way of uh, just get, getting to know other people in a better way, uh, because we know a lot of the, each other's products. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that if if everybody if anybody wants to go to wants to 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 launch something to the Danish market, find a, a, a Danish agency or a Danish trading partner that you trust, um, and uh, and uh, work together with them. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough, Lars. Let's go to the chat box. Uh, first of all, Adis is with us from Sarajevo. Adis, great to see you. So first of all, congrats for the mask-free country, uh, Lars, to you and your uh, country fellows. Great speech with the fantastic human and prosperous thinking, Lars. Uh, regards from the future EU part, Bosnia, Western Balkans region. Well, what is your uh, uh, what is your say on the Western Balkans and Bosnia in particular, Lars? When do we when do we plan to welcome this country in the EU? Well, I'm not into foreign politics as such. I'm more uh, perhaps a local businessman, a local politician, and and, and but first of all, of course, uh, a democratic citizen in in the global world. I think that we should welcome everybody who has a democratic touch uh, and could live up to human rights standards. Um, the thing is that uh, that is that this is a, a explosive. Uh, um, topic to go into that religious fights should uh, not be exported to other uh, other places in the world we have seen turkey uh, we have seen uh, poland uh, which is a major discussions in denmark right now because uh, in denmark we have a very high standard on human rights uh, perspectives um gay uh, issues and 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 the the, the sex liberalization and and um, we have uh, we want to have we are a christian country but we need to we want to have everybody should be welcome here but we don't want religious fights uh, and parallel communities so uh, i don't know that much about how western balkan and, and bosnia is going today uh, but I hope that that there's peace in the region and um, and that we can welcome people like we did with Greece or Portugal or uh, or Spain or the Southern Europe for 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 years years ago, um, where you can see that that uh, it has lifted the working environment and the environment and a lot of uh, and, and the wealth for the uh, for the common population as well by being a part of of a greater community. Uh, we would I, I would personally like to see that but of course okay. we need to have some standards on on uh, democratic and religious and, and and other issues as well okay thank you very much by the way it was not a tricky question you know just just an ordinary one it's a good thing to talk martin is with us also from uh, france martin good to see you do we see you we are, we do see you now great to see you so Martin is doing business with mostly between Europe and Africa. Uh, Lars, how is your connection business-wise 
uh, with Africa. Do you have any any agencies within this network, or this is pure European network, convert that, agency network? Yeah, not not that I'm aware of. Uh, mm. We don't have any clients uh, on the African continent. Um, I think that that the, the most of my knowledge to Africa is uh, is going to a vacation to Tunisia or something like that <laughs> once in a while. Uh, I don't have any any uh, insights at all. Okay. Uh, Milena is with us, I believe, from Copenhagen, right? And she's thanking you for the pro-European yes. views. I think the vast majority Lars, of Europeans are still pro-European, I would say, you know? Uh, do you think differently? Uh, several studies in Denmark has or polls have said that the, the Danish population is pro uh, uh pro the pro the european uh, union um there has been some some discussions about is the, the european union deciding too much do we want to have some more uh some not more decisions in the national parliament and of course it's also always a balance uh because in in a european community it's a parliament and it's a democratic uh, organ as well. So if a majority of, of countries wants to have a different or uh, certain legislation, it could be on maternity leave or paternity leave, uh, or it could be on uh, working environment or chemicals or whatever. Uh, we need to live up to those uh, to those standards. It, it can you can't be in a European Union where you where you put down a veto every time something goes like like if, that you wanted something different. We have to, we have to remember that the European Union only makes decisions or or, uh, uh, or political initiatives that the member states launch. Yeah, uh, and I would say that sometimes we need to get out of our comfort zone uh, more frequently, you know, because uh, uh, life is just uh, something that it's not a place in heaven, but it's a real life here happening uh, today. And this is just my personal view, and I'm not running for any political position. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds uh, very good. Yeah. And uh, dear friends, uh, we are not yet there at the end. Let me share also one another secret with you. Lars is actually running to be a mayor in his hometown. Lars, when do we keep our fingers crossed for you? On the 16th of the November, there's uh, local elections and regional elections in Denmark. And I think this is another issue that, uh, that we need to, uh, to, uh, to address uh, in the European Union, 25% of the population do not vote in Denmark. Mm. So 75% is going to the election booth and uh, putting a cross uh, beside a name on a, on a on a on a voting list, and that, I think that's a, a huge democratic problem. We have uh, much more participation to the national parliaments. Uh, almost 90%, uh, which is only 10% not attending, but 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 25% uh, staying away from the voting booths, where you have schools, libraries, nursing homes, uh, everything that is close to you is going down in in your own municipality or or your local uh, city council, uh, and uh, and and a fourth of uh, 25%. Uh, do not participate. I think that's a huge democratic problem, especially when we have uh, a lot of uh, places in the world where there's war, where people are not free. They have do, do not have the uh, freedom to speech or to have your opinions or you don't have free press. And then we have a nonchalant um, way of, of just the uh, 25% going, being, being, being home in the sofa and not participating in the local elections. I think that's a, that's a problem that we need to address. It's a challenge, I would say, and yeah. it's, it's a never ending story. It's a process, uh, you know, and, uh, let me, uh, Lars, uh, read another question from Paul from Taiwan. It's a good one since we are all talking about green deal this way or that way. Uh, so what Denmark is doing against CO2 emissions, do you think carbon capture and reuse tech is needed in Denmark? What's your view on that, Lars? Uh, 
The climate <laughs> issue, of course, is, uh, is a global um, discussion right now. There has been very, very uh, ambitious uh, plans in, uh, in Denmark. Um, for instance, uh, the Danish uh, industry organization and the Danish Chamber of Commerce have uh, participated in the uh, in the national legislation about uh, reducing Danish CO2 emissions with uh, 70% between before uh, 20 something 30 40 50 30 i think it's it's very it's very ambitious uh, and uh, the Danish technology on wind power solar power uh, is quite uh, mature uh, we are global uh, front runner, if not leader, in in, uh, in wind energy uh, and in uh, alternative uh, energy forms. Uh, we also have a lot of smart buildings. Uh, we have uh, very much reuse in uh, construction materials. Uh, when we have demol demolition and uh, new constructions of buildings and uh, both uh, plans and office buildings and uh, housing. So, so the, the standards in Denmark is very high. We don't have, I think we have uh, less than two or 3% of our waste is going into landfills. Uh, mm. We have a lot of, uh, of uh, waste management handling in, in big facilities with, uh, with uh, central heating. Uh, and we have a lot of reuse uh, cycle plants. So, so, um, yeah, I, I well, think man. that the most most of people, right wing or left wing, we need we need to do something about the uh, the, the climate change. Uh, and and Denmark is in in no matter of, of political discussions, we have very uh, proactive approach on that. Great answer, Lars, and I thank you for that. We are a bit over. Uh... Uh, our timing, Lars, so my last question, uh, if you don't mind, would be a bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, why, while you are not uh, wa running for the mayor or doing your business or flying, et cetera, et cetera, what, what is Lars about in his pre free time? Well, being a part-time politician, it takes uh, most of my <laughs> spare time anyway. And of course, uh, having a communication agency with a lot of deadlines and a lot of, of skilled people uh, to manage is, is uh, taking most of my time. But on my free time, I like to uh, drive my old Citroëns. I have uh, six old Citroëns, two CVs and CXs and BXs. And uh, uh, I, I very much enjoy uh, driving old French cars, being a member of the French car club in Denmark, the Citroën Institute Denmark. Um, that's, a, that's a way that I can yeah, skip, I, thinking, skip, skip thinking politics and business and just uh, driving around in my, my old car. And it felt nice, and I saw that on your website as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 this is uh, some emotional stuff for you, then. Huh? Yes, it is. Well, Lars, I thank you very much for your time, for your input, for sharing all your ideas, uh, pro et contra, with all of us here in the room. Thank you uh, for the invitation. I, I would uh, leave the last 15 uh, seconds, if you want, to you. Maybe you can address our, our friends here. No, I just want to thank you for, for inviting me and I hope that the, the participants uh, have, uh, have been cool with the, the things that I said. I don't want to be controversial about the things, but uh, I'm a European of heart uh, and uh, it was very nice seeing all of you from different countries. That's, that's really enjoying. I can only talk on my behalf, Lars. I enjoyed this 36 minutes now and I see some of the smiles here in, in the room. So I guess... It goes the same for them. Thank you once again, Lars. Uh, all the best in the future endeavors and give me a call on 16 November evening time. Okay. Maybe we have a new VIP <laughs> among of us. <laughs> and I'll send a nice follow up email today, dear friends. I will uh, also uh, copy paste Lars contacts just in case you want to do some follow up uh, directly. And uh, I invite you as normal to our next session, this time next week, when I will be hosting Piotr Kaczor from Warsaw, Poland. This will be a very nice discussion. He is in aircrafts industry, so it should be another perspective, very useful and pro-European one as well. 
In the meantime, stay safe, stay, stay healthy. Good day to you and bye-bye.